Okay, so we're over in the slightly cooler side and we have my Brookmansia, which is doing okay. These little puckered marks here, I'm thinking that's because it's so near the fan. Uh, none of the other leaves seem to be affected. It was just these top ones. I've cut a couple of them off, but it just started getting puckered. I can't see anything on it. I can't see any spider mite or anything, because this is another one that gets spider mite once you bring it inside. You'll notice over here, it's looking a little more sparse. And that's because the streptocarpus are now going over and I've got them all under the benches. Um, they are ready for a tidy up. I'm trying to do a little bit as I go along, but you can see how the leaves go yellow. Some of them do really well and hang on and hang on, uh, but a lot of them have begun to just really what they normally naturally do at this time of year. You know, I've got all my fans coming on. I'll just have to switch those off, then I'll get back to you. And we're back and the fans are off. So you can see how some of the leaves begin to go quite yellow. So we're at that stage now where we've got some of these plants with tons and tons of these like dead X flower stalks there and you've got loads of like really grotty brown growth and like really congested in there because these grow in little rosettes and they need to be dealt with. I can't just leave it like that all through winter and expect them to come up again nice and healthy next year. That's not going to happen. So they need to be cleaned up. Uh, you can also see, see how you get like a half leaf there, would it? I mean, this is a natural thing. You keep it green, then it goes like that, and that will kind of eject that bit off there. But I can help them along the way. So usually at this time of the year, it's always December. I gather them all together. I give them a good going over, a good tidy up, trim out the dead stalks, the flower stalks, cut off all the yellow leaves, uh, keep some of the really green, small young leaves, the, the good vigorous growth, and maybe thin out some of the rosettes, maybe pot some of them up. If you're interested in seeing something like that, I know I've made videos on in the past, but it's always good to do like an update on it and add any extra bits that you've learnt about it. So if you're interested in seeing anything like that, please write in the comments and I will make one. I might make one anyway, whether you're interested or not. <laughs> so this one is a species one, look at that. So this is my huge, needs repotting. I also forget what it's called. It's a Streptocarpus one. Streptocarpus dunii. I was going to say gunii. I have a Eucalyptus gunii, but that's really completely different. I can't get that back in. Um, so that's doing what it, you know, what some of the other Streptocarpus do. Now I'm hoping it's not going to like eject the rest of the leaf. Um, these only flower once, and once they flower, they die. Then is it mon monoecious? 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 I don't know. It begins with an M. I'll look it up and put it on screen. Um, it's not showing any signs of flowering yet, but maybe this is an indication that it might do. I want it to flower, even though I know it dies, but then you collect the seed and apparently they're very easy to sow and to germinate. So what has happened to this poor old Terris quadriorita, which was my favourite fern? Would you believe slug damage? That's what's caused this. Unbelievably, slugs absolutely love this plant to death. And I'm really surprised because normally slugs go for soft, sappy growth. And this is anything, but this is quite rough and tough. But I have caught probably about five or six slugs on this, completely destroying it. They slither all the way up the stems, the fronds, and they just munch away at things and it all goes brown. So that's why I brought this here so I can keep a close eye on it, keep it away from slugs and see if I can get some new growth on it. Uh, which is such a shame because it was looking great at one point. So what else have we got? Some nice blooms on this. I brought my Drosera and some other carnivorous plants up here because they do like the light at this time of year. And then we've got some nice Venus fly traps here. They've been brought in, see if I can give them a bit of extra care. I left them out all winter and all summer this year. And uh, they didn't really do that well, to be honest. They've only opened these larger pictures since they've come in here. I know I do have 
um, a north facing garden so I don't get the sun very often so that might be a reason they do like the light if I could have got them in the sunshine they might have done a little bit better but they seem to be coming back again now and maybe they were the source for all my slugs because I've had absolutely loads of slugs this autumn in here I've had to come in every night hunting 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 one of them was like this big it must have been I don't know about uh, perhaps I'm exaggerating we're doing the old fisherman's trick it was probably about six or seven centimeters which is quite big for a slug in a greenhouse you wonder how the heck has this thing got in because i have no idea where there are any holes in here I, I really don't think there are but i'm wondering whether these have come in as eggs on pots that i've had outside that's possible that would give a reason i mean this banana down here has been out you know all through the summer and the spring so that's why i've got all these slug pellets around the bottom so that's a, that's a possibility, but uh, it's definitely on the way now. I've spent that many nights coming in and clearing up the slugs. Uh, some of these Tridescanti, again, they're not looking that great now because of the time of year, but I think I'm going to up pot some of them and give them a little bit more of a root run. I've seen, I'm talking to slugs, look. That's going to mother me now through the rest of the video. And that is in the day. They're not even supposed to come out in the day. They're only supposed to come out at night. Somebody tell the slugs. Fortunately, it's no one near my plant. I have to say, they, a lot of the plants I've got in here are not that attractive to slugs. They don't seem to like the orchids very much unless it's something like uh, like a soft leaf dendrobium. Like something like that. They tend to like the buds on that and the flowers. Not so much the leaves unless they're very, very young leaves. But for the most part, most of my plants just don't seem to be, or don't seem to succumb to slug damage. Having said that, the slugs are in here, they've nowhere else to go, so they're going to crawl around or slime around and find something, aren't they? Okay, so, what else have we got to show? Looking really nice on the Penthes, that's the Loei crossed with Ventricosa, is it? Yes. Uh, my fern's doing really well. They always do better once we get rid of the sun. I don't know why, because that one apparently grows in the middle of Florida, right in the sunshine, up in a tree. But as we know, in a greenhouse, it's completely different. There are other, there are other factors at work, uh, as well as the sun. You know, we've not got the ventilation in here. Um, we've not got the length of days during the winter months. I don't know, I don't know what the reason is, but they always do better. Same with that one over there. I like that one. I've got rid of a lot of the dead leaves off that one and it's just running out of space. I don't know where else to put it. But they all seem to do better, autumn, winter, for me anyway. Um, so yeah, some straps are going over. This is still gorgeous, always worth a look. Really impressed with this because the flowers have lasted ages. I seem to be, uh, or my conditions seem to be pretty good for growing Phragmopediums based on the fact that I've now got two and both of them have done really well. That one's got another bud there, so that's, that is a just gorgeous thing. We're in cyclamen season now, aren't we? So I have a couple of cyclamens here. That one's coming up there. That one's coming up. Notice this puckering on the leaves. Now I put that down to the streptica, or the cyclamen mite, the, uh, what's it called? Tassonamid mite. However, I'm reluctant to actually spray it. And the reason for that is that as soon as I spray it, then the, I know the flowers will stop because that's happened in the past. And the growth is then very prone to mutations. The older leaves are puckered, the younger leaves seem to be okay. So I'm gonna give that one a miss with the spray and just let it do its thing. Got some nice cyclamen here, some beautiful leaves. This one's just coming into bloom. This, the leaves on that are fantastic. This is a hybrid, but I've no idea what the name of it is. It doesn't say, which is such a, an unfortunate thing. They go and sell you these things, but I suppose they're just treated as throwaway things. And for some reason, they don't think it's worth actually giving a name to them. Some lovely blooms here. Uh, we've got some more. That one is one that brought back to life. A few of them are actually, I think there's only two. I only bought two new ones. This one again, gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. You could grow it just for the leaves. That looks like it's gonna be a pink bloom. Another big one there that I've had a few years. That's hopefully got yeah, loads and loads of buds in there. Can you see? So hopefully that's going to come back soon. However, we have a disaster. Look down here. 
So these were also ones that I tried to bring back to life. I've had them a few years. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five cyclamen pots there. They have just gone too squishy. They've died. They've died on me. And I think the reason for that is that I let them desiccate. Yes, over the summer months, you're really not to water them. However, you've got to be careful that they don't totally dry out to the point where they shrink away from the side. I just took them under a bench and I completely forgotten about them. Um, this is what happens. I've lost them. Now, I don't think it's any surprise, actually, that most of them are tiny, tiny little tubers. So I think that, like humans, like anything, you know, the smaller, the younger, the more vulnerable. Um, this one is in a bigger pot, but again, it's quite a small tuber. It's certainly nothing like the others that I've got. If you can get them at a decent size, then you're more likely to be able to oversummer them through the dormancy period. So that's the cyclamen. Okay, so I've put this one up for you to see. So this is Dendrobium berryoda, and I've got loads of potential blooms on this, loads of bloom spikes on it. But I picked it up because I wanted you to see the leaves. Now, what's going on with those leaves? I really don't know, haven't a clue. Is it just that they're getting older? But I've seen some specimens that were it's very similar to this, except the leaves weren't like this. And it wasn't like this when I bought it. I mean, I've had it again a couple of years now. It's clearly not stopping it from blooming. It's not stopping it from giving me new canes. Uh, what's going on? It's in a very constricted pot, that's for sure. It does need a repot now. It's, you know, I'm surprised it can breathe in there. But, you know, the blooms are going to be okay. So maybe if I repotted it, maybe that'll help. It's under the lights now, so that's giving it more light. I don't know what's going on with that. Any ideas, put them in the comments. Love to hear from people. So I've got my other mandevilla over here that's going to go to Ed. And it's a shame that I'm going to have to cut off all these vining shoots here. I don't think I'm going to be able to save them. Um, you'll find with Mandevilla just like the slightest knock and the, that white sap's coming out of them. I'm going to have to chop that back a little bit, otherwise I'm not going to be able to get it to him. But hopefully if we can get it into position very quickly and get it in a nice sunny warm position, it might be able to take off for him like it has for me. So these were cuttings that I took a couple of years ago. It does take a while for them to get going. That's why I've took a few more cuttings over there as insurance and I hope it does as well for him as it has done for me. Um, I have got a twinkle over here that I want to chat about. So this twinkle has no roots whatsoever, yet it has three spikes on it. It doesn't look great, probably because it's got no roots on it. Uh, but I've left them because I thought, well, okay, let's leave them even if it dies after this, then at least I've had a good few years out of it and I can get another one. But why has it got no roots? beyond me at this particular moment because the same thing has happened to all my Dendrobium Cuthbert Sonii hybrids. Everything's fallen off, everything's fallen off, practically everything's fallen off that one at the back there. Again, not quite sure what it is about Dendrobium Cuthbert Sonii that makes them do this. They seemingly thrive at first and they thrive for ages. And then all of a sudden it's like, right, we've had enough, Boof, we're gone. Now, I don't know what they do in the wild. Do they last for years in the wild? Whether I'm doing something wrong with them, whether my conditions... I mean, what you've got to take into account here is it's a greenhouse and the conditions fluctuate beyond anything I can do with them. Uh, I can only keep it at a certain minimum temperature. I can't stop the maximum temperatures. And maybe for some orchids, that fluctuation is just too much. Um, okay, I could install an air conditioner, but how expensive would that be? I'm just not inclined to do that. Um, I'm just treating them like shop-bought flowers. If I get a couple of years out of them, fantastic. So what else have we got to talk about? Uh, my Begonia fuchsioides still looking grey, coming up with some new blooms, new buds, even at this time of year. The Sotoanum, Oncidium Sotoanum, still doing great. Lots of blooms on that one. Uh, that one seems to be doing okay in these conditions. Tradescantia zebrina still doing fabulously well, still without any dead leaves on it whatsoever. So that shows you the benefit of trying to root it along its length rather than just in the top of the pot. Um, so the last thing I want to discuss today is the bubble wrap at the outside of the greenhouse. And you might have seen the video on that. 
it did really well up until the first gales that we had, the first really strong winds. And then a lot of it kind of fell off. Well, not it didn't. It didn't go flying down the road. I half expected it to. Listening to it during the night, thinking, "Oh my goodness, I'm going to have no bubble wrap on the outside." Got up the following morning. It was just a case of repairing. None of the plastic was ripped. Some of the clips had come off, and it was kind of flapping around a bit. But I bought myself another load of clips and very kindly they sent me an extra 50 by accident, I guess. However, they certainly went to good use and I bought that many clips from this, this company anyway that I think I probably deserved a few. So I have redone it again. I've added those clips that have fallen off back. I've put a few more clips on and it seems to be okay. We had some gales the other night and I had hardly anything to do. Just one or two had just started to come off a little bit so I just poked them back on again. So it's doing all right at the moment. Whether it's actually saving me any money, I have no idea. And yes, I intend leaving it on all year round. That's the, that's the plan anyway. And I have at the back of my mind, I did see one of Ed's videos where he showed you, great video, showed you how he actually used polycarbonate on the inside of the greenhouse when he first got the greenhouse up there. Polycarbonate is by far a more efficient insulating material than bubble wrap. So if you can do that, if you get your greenhouse, if you can do that first, then it saves you the hassle that I'm having at the moment of wondering how I can improve things insulation wise without having to remove all these plants. That would be such a massive task. I really don't fancy doing that at all. However, if I can do it on the outside, then that might well be the solution to my problem because obviously there is nothing to hinder me uh, or get in the way if I do it on the outside. So that's my next plan. I'm going to have a look at how I can do that, pr providing that health issues allow me to. And I'm gonna see if I can actually improve the outside of the greenhouse insulation wise using some polycarbonate sheets. It's looking really nice. I've had to give this a tidy up. Um, over here, this one over here, so you can see we've actually got some of these kind of Drosera growing in that pot, but that pot, you can see those little rosettes down there, that's really what that's meant to contain. That's uh, what they call Drosera Hamiltonii. And I'm a little bit worried that, that it's just going to be overcome, overtaken by these larger ones. So I might have to see if I can do something about that. I, I don't suspect, I mean, I, I know they don't, they don't actually tra transplant that well. Uh, this is why people grow them from seed. So I might just have to sacrifice these, take them out, otherwise I'm gonna lose those others. Um, Master Valley doing quite well. I've got buds on that one and buds on that one. So hopefully we should have something to see there. This fern down here is doing really well. It's a new one, that made in her fern. So I'm looking for some more of these, some that look a little bit different. So if anybody has a sauce in the UK, I would be very grateful to see it. So that's all the news for now. I hope you enjoyed this vlog style video. Please write in the comments anything at all that comes to mind. I love to have chats to people in the comments. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.